Throughout 2021 and 2022, we spent a great deal of time reporting on and analyzing and deconstructing all kinds of emails and other documents that emerged from inside the UL health policy industry, the worldwide health policy industry, to demonstrate how often and how deliberately healthcare workers or healthcare officials rather lied to the public about many aspects of COVID. They knew they were lying about the efficacy of masks. They knew they were lying about the efficacy of vaccines. They knew they were lying about the risks that those vaccines entailed. And they especially set out to lie about the origins of COVID. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, Dr. Fauci himself was receiving emails from the leading epidemiologists saying they analyzed the DNA, they analyzed other components of the virus, and they were highly convinced that it came from a lab in Wuhan, which just coincidentally was the place where COVID started, and it just coincidentally has a city where the COVID coronavirus lab is located. And yet Fauci was petrified by the idea that scientists would be identified as the cause, in part because Fauci himself invested in that Wuhan lab and had all kinds of contracts that he controlled that were related to it. But also just in general, he didn't want scientists to be blamed. So he got those doctors who sent him those emails within a week to sign on to a letter in Lancet that not only affirmed the exact opposite view than the one they insisted they believed, that Lancet letter notoriously not only proclaimed that all signs pointed to a naturally occurring virus, even though the scientists a week before had insisted it had all the indicia of a lab leak. But it also proclaimed that the knowledge that it was originally, that it naturally occurred was so high and so definitive that anyone who questioned the origins of COVID, as described in that Lancet letter, was guilty of spreading disinformation, propagating prejudice, bigotry, and hatred against scientists in general and Chinese scientists in particular, and from that point forward were rendered taboo, were censored from the internet. That was a debate that was not permitted. And within Fauci's own email box was all kinds of evidence from the world's leading epidemiologists and other scientists that the evidence suggested highly that it came from a lab leak, was manufactured and built in a lab and not from a naturally occurring source. And we've gone over that so many times. There's so much evidence that we were deliberately eyed to. We haven't been covering it very much because we think those questions are essentially settled. It is the view of the leading agencies inside the United States government that it is far more likely than not that this COVID uh, pandemic came from a lab leak in Wuhan and not from a food market in China. And somehow, They tried to claim that the view that the virus came from a lab was the racist view. That's what the Lancet letter said, that Fauci organized, that it was racist against the Chinese to suggest that it came from a lab leak in Wuhan, when obviously the far more racist theory, to the extent that that even matters, I mean, all that really matters is what is the true theory, but to the extent that one theory was racist, the far more racist theory was that Chinese food markets are so filthy and disgusting and disease-ridden, and they eat bats, and as a result of the Chinese filth, this is the liberal view, this virus escaped from their food markets because of their crappy, unsanitary, primitive eating habits. That was always the former racist view, and yet somehow it was the lab leak theory that the Chinese conduct highly sophisticated research in partnership with the U.S. government, and were not careful sufficiently and caused this virus to leak, that got branded the racist theory, even though the exact opposite was true. This week, there is even more evidence of just how malicious and deliberate this campaign of deceit was. Emily Kaufman from The Right to Know wrote on May 22nd the following, quote, Anthony Fauci aid triggers deeper concerns about hidden emails on covid origins. And this is what she wrote, quote, testimony from NIAID senior, so that's the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, senior scientific advisor uh, Daniel Morins, a longtime aide to former NIAID director Anthony Fauci, only deepened congressional concerns about the possibility of concealed or destroyed evidence, uh, emails concerning connections between the Institute and the Wuhan Institute of Virology. 
a memo in over 150 emails released by the House Select Committee Subcommittee on the Corona Pandemic Wednesday show that Morin spent considerable time and energy avoiding the Freedom of Information Act. Morin sought to conceal emails in which he championed his close friend, Echo Health Alliance President Peter Daszak, a scientist who subcontracted Fauci's funding to the lab in Wuhan for experiments that made coronaviruses more deadly. Morin said that he and Dan Daszak met 20 years ago and were part of the same close-knit, quote, fraternity among emerging infectious disease experts. One email released by the committee suggests that Fauci himself may have subverted public records requests through use of a personal email account bypassing official channels. Quote, I can either send stuff to Tony on his private email or hand it to him at his work and at his house, Morton's emailed on April 21st, 2021. Quote, he is too smart to let colleagues send him stuff that could cause trouble. The reason these email policies are in place for public officials, this is something that Hillary Clinton avoided as well, is because the public is supposed to have the right to see them through FOIA request, and they're required to be sent and received over official government email channels. Purposely using your personal email accounts or getting documents in person so they don't go over government systems so that you can then destroy them and avoid FOIA disclosure is illegal and obviously corrupt. You would only do that if you're trying to hide from the public what it is that you're actually saying and doing. And this is Anthony Fauci's top aide, who, quote, confirmed Wednesday that he discussed grants from NIA to the Wuhan Institute of Virology with Fauci. Quote, I certainly told him some things that he asked me to tell him about the situation with Peter Daszak, Morin said. That statement contradicts a transcribed interview Morin gave the committee earlier this year in which he said he did not recall discussing Echo Health or the Wuhan lab with Fauci. Now, just to remind you of what this scandal was about, one of the organizers and signers of that Lancet letter that early on told the world, don't even consider the possibility that the lab came from a leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, it only came from a natural leak, was Peter Daszak. He was one of the organizers and signers of that, le of that letter. And he had an obvious, gigantic conflict of interest in claiming that because he had, his EcoHealth Alliance had contracts approved by Anthony Fauci with the Wuhan Institute uh, of Virology. And so, of course, he had a strong career and personal interest in publishing a definitive statement at the beginning of the pandemic in Lancet to say, oh, no, don't look at that institute over there that I have contracts with. It was only naturally occurring. It was a huge journalistic scandal that Lancet published that letter without disclosing that conflict. Eight months later, they went back and disclosed the conflict somewhat quietly. It was a huge journalistic and, and scientific scandal that happened here. And now it's turning out that exactly as was clear and predicted, Dr. Fauci and his closest advisors were deliberately hiding from the public everything they were doing and saying in private. And you only do that for one reason, because you're ashamed of what you're doing or you want to deceive the public and have them never know. Here from the U.S. House of Representatives on May 22nd, 2024, the Select Subcommittee on the Coronas, uh, Coronas Pandemic is a memo entitled Allegations of Wrongdoing and Illegal Activity by Dr. David Morin, Senior Advisor to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, former director, Dr. Anthony Fauci. And there was an email that we're going to show you. And here's the description, quote, Previous witnesses, witness testimony and documents in the custody of the, sub, of the Select Committee on the Coronavirus Pandemic raises serious questions regarding potential wrongdoing and illegal activity by Dr. Daniel Morins. And then here is the email that uh, they produced, and it was an email from uh, Daniel Morins, and we have it here. It's a, uh, there you see it better on the screen. It's dated June 28, 2021. It's from Dr. Morins at the National Institute of Health, the NIAID. And he wrote the following, quote, sorry, he wrote the following to Dr. Fauci, quote, sorry, he said, let me just check that. Um, yeah, this is, this is uh, Morin's email. And he said, quote, sorry, on April 
A April 18, 2020, Peter Daszak emailed me and Tony congratulating Tony on standing up for science. That was when Dr. Fauci warned that nobody should even question whether or not scientists in the Wuhan Institute of Virology were responsible for a lab leak. Peter called him and congratulated him for, quote, standing up for science by telling the public, even though they had no idea if it was true, that it was naturally occurring. That email somehow fell into the hands of a congressman, probably via a FOIA of someone who didn't delete it, as I did, delete all of Peter's emails and others relating to the origin when the shit started hitting the fan. He's saying the minute this became a controversy, I went and deleted all of Peter, da Peter Daszak's emails and every other email relating to this so that nobody could get it from FOIA. Anyway, the congressman got a copy of Peter D's email from someone at NIH, and he now wants to get any reply Tony and I or anyone else may have sent back to Peter. Mine was erased long ago. I verified that today. And I feel pretty sure Tony's was too. Dr. Fauci's was, uh, reply was also deleted. He went on, quote, the best way to avoid uh, FOLA, which is the uh, FOIA law that applies to them, to, uh, to avoid FOLA hassles is to delete all emails when you learn a subject is getting sensitive. So you have all these emails back and forth, and the minute you know Congress is interested or the public is interested or people suspect there was wrongdoing, you immediately go and delete them all. And then he concluded, quote, in any case, there is nothing here except opportunities to harass, hassle, and huff and puff. But of course, the public has no ability to determine that because they erased and deleted all of the evidence with the explicit intention of preventing it from being discoverable by Congress or from the public through FOIA laws. Something that is absolutely illegal to do, to go and either purposely put government emails on a private server to keep it away from the public or to go and delete it when you know that it's being investigated. And that's what this email explicitly says they did. Here's that notorious Lancel letter for those of you who don't remember. It was dated February 19, 2020, so right at the beginning of the pandemic, and it carried the name Peter Daszak, which you see in the, in the yellow, along with several scientists who emailed Fauci within the week prior to say that they thought that all the indicia suggested the lab leak, not natural occurrence, and the letter was, quote, a statement in support of the scientists, public health professionals, and medical professionals of China combating COVID-19. This was the letter that shaped the public's understanding and the media's treatment and big tech's willingness to entertain debates. They declared right from the start that they knew something they had no idea was true and that any questioning of it was racist, anti-scientific, and spreading of malicious disinformation. Quote, the rapid, open, and transparent sharing of data on this outbreak is now being threatened by rumors and misinformation about its origins. We stand together to strongly condemn conspiracy theories suggesting that COVID-19 does not have a natural origin. Scientists from multiple countries have published and analyzed genomes of a causative agent, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, and they overwhelmingly conclude that this coronavirus originated in wildlife as have so many other emerging pathogens. This is further supported by a letter from the presidents of the U.S. National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, and by the scientific communities they represent. Conspiracy theories do nothing but create fear, rumors, and prejudice that jeopardize our global collaboration in the fight against this virus. This is one of the most corrupt things that has ever happened in the history of public health policy. That Lancer letter was a fraud down to its core in so many ways. The fact that Peter Daszak signed it with no disclosure of his conflicts, his obvious financial and reputational and career conflicts, given that he and Fauci both had direct connections and funding of the very research in the Wuhan Institute of Lab uh, Virology that was suspected as having caused the lab leak. All of this was a complete disgrace. It destroyed pop, uh, faith and trust in one of our remaining institutions that still commanded it, which were physicians and scientists and health professionals. And now as the evidence comes out more and more, there's more and more evidence of just how corrupt and criminal and deceitful this was. They were purposely deleting exactly those emails that they knew would inform the public debate the minute controversies or questions started. They were using means to keep it out of the public's hands. You don't do that 
unless you are a deeply corrupt and deceitful individual. And that's what so many of the people were who formed the original COVID narrative and then dictated COVID policy over the next three years. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.